Welcome back, guys, to the Wickless Run of Castlevania 2 for the NES. We now have Max Hearts, and it's time to move on. The fourth mansion is out to the west. We have to go to a cliff and duck using the red crystal to summon a tornado. Whenever we summon the tornado, it will take us directly to the fourth mansion. Right now, though, we aren't headed directly to the fourth mansion. We will be going there, of course, but uh, right now there's an optional item I'd like to go get. It's an item that you can't equip or anything, but uh, once you get it, it lets you carry eight laurels instead of four. It's called the Silk Bag. It's going to be kind of annoying to get to because of these things. These little blob-type creatures are so annoying. We have laurels to spin, though, so let's go ahead and just use some laurels and run for it. You have to go to the very end of this lower area down here. It leads to a dead end, and whenever you get to the dead end, you use garlic. It'll make a little ghost of a sales lady appear or something like that. I don't know. It's kind of weird. It'll make a lady appear. You talk to the lady and she gives you the silk bag. The silk bag is definitely worth it in my opinion. Having uh, double the amount of laurels is always a good thing. Uh, it shouldn't take us, take us but just a minute to get there. After I get the silk bag I'm just going to fast forward to me back at town so I'm going to go back there and restock on laurels and get our uh, hearts back and everything. Silk bag lady is just up ahead. We got one of these blobs here. Man, I really hate the blobs. Like I said uh, earlier in the run, I really do think that the blobs are easily one of, if not the most enemy to put up with throughout this entire run. Oh my god. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna try to lure that blob here into this piece of garlic. It's another reason why I'm gonna go back to town, get my health back and everything before we head for the fourth mansion. I'll give you a silk bag. There we go. Like I said, it's always nice to have a silk bag, double the laurels and everything. Well, I'm going to head back to town, and I'm just going to fast forward to there. Alright, we're back now. I have max hearts again. We have max laurels. We only have seven pieces of garlic, but uh, that's more than enough for now. If we need some later, then we can just buy some then. For now, though, we are headed to uh, the fourth mansion. Like I said earlier, we had to go to a cliff and duck using the red crystal. If I remember correctly, the red crystal bit I learned from the World to Power novel that I read years ago. That was one part of the game that I didn't know until I had read about that. I think it was either that or the blue crystal ducking with it in order to get to the second mansion. Just stuff like that. Either way, there's like no way for you to know to duck with crystals unless you look up a guide of some sort. Whatever, though. Just uh, here at this town, we're going to buy a couple of laurels real quick. The cliff that we have to go to is to the west of this town by one screen. One screen transition, anyway. The enemies on the way there aren't that bad. Castlevania 2 actually has Medusa heads, but they're so much easier than they are in the other games. In the other Castlevanias, they follow that annoying little wavy line pattern. In this game, they slowly for uh, float towards you, which is a lot easier to put up with. We're headed out of town now, going west to the cliff. We're done with everything that we need to do here. I'm not even sure if this town has a church. I can't quite remember. Even if it does, we're only missing one bar of health, so, eh, doesn't matter. The enemies are pretty easy to put up with through here. Nothing too tough or anything. The cliff is just to the left over here. You'll have to cross a couple of these blocks that keep moving up and down while they're over water. The blocks have a strange effect on Simon's momentum for his jumps. We'll talk about it whenever we get there. We're right here at them. If you jump while they're going down, Simon will do like a low jump, but if you jump while they're going up, he'll do kind of a high jump. It's kind of weird, so make sure that you time your jumps correctly as the blocks are going up. And don't stand on the very edge of a block, otherwise you might overshoot it and jump into the water and kill yourself. The tornado bit that I was talking about takes us straight to the fourth mansion. Here we go. The fourth mansion is extremely, extremely short. Assuming that you did what I said earlier in the third mansion about buying another oak stake on your way out. If you don't have an oak stake whenever you come here, you really have to go out of your way to get one. So, like I said in the previous part, make absolutely sure that you get an oak stake from the third mansion. Doing that will make this mansion here so much shorter. It's basically come in, 
come out, basically. It's a very short path through the piece of Dracula, and it's a really short path getting back out. So it'll take only a couple minutes to complete this particular mansion. I wouldn't even worry about getting another oak stake until you go to the next mansion, because it's easier to get one there than it is to get one here. At least in my opinion it is. We are right by the next piece of Dracula. The piece of Dracula that we get here in this mansion is Dracula's Nail. Whenever you equip Dracula's Nail, it gives your whip basically the same effect as uh, the Holy Water has. Uh, whenever you uh, throw holy water on certain blocks, it'll destroy them, as you all have seen whenever I went into stores and stuff. If you put the Dracula's Nail on, then uh, you can destroy blocks by swinging your whip. Which is okay, but still, it's not that great of a function. Still, the Dracula's Rib has a better effect, in my opinion. You now process Dracula's Nail. I guess it's actually possess, but whatever. All that's left to do from here now is just leave the mansion. wonder what a laurel is anyways, like some kind of plant, I wonder? Because I'm not really exactly sure what it is. Doesn't really matter, though. It's pretty much just best to jump over the skeleton warriors that you see now. Everything's starting to take so many hits, it's best just to avoid the enemies instead of trying to sit around and kill them. Unless they're in your way like this. There we go. One, two, four, six, eight hits right now. That means by the next mansion they're going to be taking 15 or so hits to kill. 15 or 16. So yeah, like I said, things are starting to take way too many hits that they just take too long to kill anymore. There we go. And we are now done with the fourth mansion. Time to head west. We won't have to go very far before we're at the 5th mansion. Got a duck here using the red crystal and enter this little lake. If you have the Morning Star, which is, an, which is like a whip upgrade that you can buy, if you have the Morning Star, you can get it upgraded to the Flame Whip here. But uh, since we only have the Leather Whip, uh, we can't get it. Plus, it wouldn't do us that much good since uh, this is a whipless run anyway. And, uh, like I said, the 5th Mansion isn't too much further away. You have to cross a giant marsh of uh, poison or lava or whatever that stuff is. You have to cross a lot of it in order to get to the 5th Mansion. It's a good thing that we have laurels. And on top of that, there's a lady inside of the 5th Mansion who gives you all of her laurels as many times as you want. Okay, let's just run for it. Like I was saying earlier, enemies are starting to take too long to kill, so other enemies can join in with them. And now we have a horrible night. And not that big a deal, we still have plenty of laurels. So long as we can make it to the fifth mansion, we'll be good. Because like I said, there's a lady there who will just fully replenish them for us, for no cost at all. In fact, she begs you to take them, it's like, what's so bad about them? Couldn't you use those to survive, lady? Whatever, though. Not like I'm complaining. And here we are at the giant field of lava or poison or whatever it is that I was talking about. This is the last long stretch before we're at the uh, fifth mansion. Sometimes I want to call the mansions dungeons. I guess it really wouldn't make a difference. And here we are, now at the fifth mansion. One thing that's important to take note of before you even try to complete the 5th mansion is to make sure that you have a good number of hearts, like over 200 or so. Because you're going to have to fight Carmilla's Mask in this mansion and uh, you'll have to use the Golden Knife to fight off Carmilla's Mask. And uh, like I said earlier in the run, that uses 2 hearts per toss. So yes, make sure that you have a good number of hearts before even trying to complete this mansion. Plus, on top of that, you're going to have to buy an oak stake here, assuming that you didn't do it in the fourth mansion, which is okay if you didn't, because you can still beat the mansion, killing Carmilla's mask, even if you need to buy an oak stake here. I'll have a little less than 200 hearts, I'm thinking, but uh, that won't be so bad, because I should still be able to take out Carmilla's mask. You have to uh, defeat Carmilla's mask in order to get the magic cross. You need the magic cross in order to enter Dracula's fortress for the final battle. 
as soon as we've uh, beaten this mansion, I'm gonna have to farm up for some hearts as well as buy more laurels. Yeah, I'll do that. I, I know a pretty legit place to do that at. I'll just do it there. Whenever we get to the place that I'm talking about after the mansion, I'll just fast forward back to daytime and everything, or nighttime depending on when it, whenever it is that that I get max hearts. Eh, actually, I think uh, if I get max hearts and it's nighttime, I'll still just wait until it hits day. That way we can visit the shop and everything without waiting. You have to go up at this little path branch here. That's where you get the oak stake at. Then after you get the oak stake, you have to come back down this way. The piece of Dracula that you get from this mansion is Dracula's Ring. Which, to my knowledge, Dracula's Ring doesn't do anything at all. You just need it in order to beat the game. Uh, it could do something, but in all the years that i played this, I've messed around with it and never once found a use for it. I figured maybe it might give you more defense or something, but that's not even the case, it seemed. So, to my knowledge, Dracula's Ring is just simply required in order to beat the game. Talk to this lady over here, she'll completely replenish all of your laurels. I beg of you to take these laurels. Be sure to talk to her, get your laurels, use one, then talk to her again to go back to Max. There you go. Now you're safe as you go across this. And we are right by Carmilla's mask, so get the golden knife ready. And enter the battle against her. Right over here. Get the golden knife ready, wait for her to come low enough, and just unload. Well, not necessarily unload, be sure to time your hits. As you can see, every time you throw a golden knife, every time it hits the enemy, it will make a little flame that it will leave behind. So it does multiple hits per throw. And like I've said before, it uses up two hearts per toss. Just keep at it if uh, Carmilla's mess manages to keep moving up to where it gets a little annoying to time your hits, just wait for her to go in a full circle around and wait for her to come low enough again. Like that. Pretty simple. That's really all that Carmilla's mess does, uh, except that occasionally it will line itself up in the middle and shoot, or uh, look, look, maybe it's like a little bloody tear or something, like shoots a little fireball down at the ground that splits and uh, goes all over the place in many directions. But if you have a uh, Dracula's rib equipped, and all you have to do is stand there, right here, like cries a tear or something, and then it shoots off in uh, five directions. Like I said, though, if you have Dracula's rib, all you have to do is stand there and you're protected. And, uh, yeah, it'll take a minute or two for Carmilla's mess to go down. It takes forever, so many hits. That's why I recommended earlier that you have plenty of hearts for this battle, because it takes a little while. But for defeating Carmilla's Mask, you get the Magic Cross, which, like I said, is needed in order to enter Dracula's Fortress. And, uh, the ring is just needed in order to beat the game, so pretty much the two items in this dungeon do nothing for you other than, other than allow you to beat the game. Oh well, though, not a big deal. You should have plenty of other tools at this point anyway. Just wait for the mask to quit shooting fireballs having fun doing that. There we go, finally. It really shouldn't be too much longer before the mask is now down and out. Kinda like the background. It's all red and blue and stuff. Kinda neat looking, I suppose. Hopefully it won't take too much longer. I know I've said that, but geez. A lot of hits on this thing. With all of the laurels that the lady back in the previous area gave us, we should be able to get out of this mansion, get across the poison marsh, and get to the next town just fine. There we go. The mask is now down and out, and we now possess the magic cross. Time to get Dracula's ring, which isn't even a body part, it's an, it's an accessory, so... Uh, whatever, I guess. If it's needed, it's needed, I suppose. You now process Dracula's ring. Time to head back. Shouldn't take us that long to get out of here. I'm just gonna do my best to avoid enemies because they take a good 15 or 16 hits to kill now, which is way too many. 
four, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve. Fifteen hits. Yeah, that's way too many unless there's just one enemy around. If there are multiple enemies, I'm just going to try to avoid them the best that I can. Yeah, screw this spider. Let's go. Wait for it to go back up. There we go. Dodge their webs. Spiders can be kind of annoying as well. I'm just trying to dodge their webs because they usually come in groups. I say we should just run for it. That spider down there is going to get really annoying. There we go. Let's just get out of here. We can buy laurels again before the end of the game, so we'll just uh, farm money and get more laurels. It shouldn't be too much uh, further from before we get out of here. Just try to avoid the skeletons the best that we can. We can jump down from here to be pretty close to the entrance again, so let's do that. Alright, now just head left from here. Once we get outside, we have to start heading towards our next town, which is a fairly small one. That's about all that we have left to, to go through for the rest of this game is pretty small towns. Just walk this skeleton out. There we go. We have to head back to the right. We have to go past where the fourth mansion is at in order to get further into the game. Like I said, we can still buy laurels and stuff in the town, so I'm not too worried about saving my laurels right now. And like I said earlier, I know a pretty legit place to farm for hearts, so once I get to that area, I'm just going to fast forward past all that. We'll also need to visit a church before too much longer. Our health is doing pretty decent right now, but uh, we'll want to have full health for the later part of the game, for the last part of it anyway. Just keep on moving now. Yeah, it's never a bad idea to have a whole bunch of laurels, especially when at this point in the game whenever the enemies take way too many hits to kill. It's best just to run for it, and laurels really help out with that. Since it's a horrible night, these skeletons are taking forever to kill 15 hits with them as well. That lady that you see down below will enchant your morning star to become the Flame Whip. The Flame Whip is the most powerful whip in the entire game. I mentioned that earlier, but I never pointed it out. If you want to get to her, you have to go along the platform moving up and down that you see in the lower right right now. Then once you get over to these bricks, either use Holy Water or the whip with Dracula's nail on them to break them open. Whichever you want. Talk to the lady and she'll enchant the whip. The place that I'd like to farm for hearts at is just to the right of the fourth mansion. Just to the right by one screen, it's a pretty legit place to farm for hearts. There are a couple of mummies there that you can just grind on. Just about there. One more screen over. Here we go. Like I said, it's a pretty good place because uh, the mummies here drop uh, big hearts that are worth six. So yeah, it's time to start grinding for hearts. I'm not going to make y'all watch me do that, so I'm going to fast forward past that, hopefully to me with max hearts and at daytime. See you in a minute. Alright, here we are again, daytime, max hearts, and we are right by the town that we need to go to. We can buy laurels in this town coming up, so we'll just go ahead and use our last one and run for it. This, uh, the town that we're going to is at the end of this area. These flying creatures always looked weird to me whenever they would walk. Just something weird about it. Just keep on moving. There's also a church in the next town so we can heal there. The laurels is in the shop at the very far right end of town. Then of course the church is right there. We'll get the laurels and then go rest up at the church for a moment. Get all of our health back and everything. Unlike most shops though, this one is already open for you to go down in. Whatever the case, the salesman is just right here. Sales lady, saleswoman. They really do look like women to me. I mean, it doesn't matter whether or not they're men or women, but uh, I can almost bet that they are women. That's just what it looks like to me anyway. Didn't mean to select no there. Whatever. And buy one more set of laurels, and then we can leave, heal up, and we are on our way. 
just get out of this building here. Go back to the church. It's just right over here to the left by a little bit. And in we go. Time to heal up. Rest here for a while. Sure thing. Here's a little trick that I like to do. Jump as you exit a screen. He'll, like, moon jump out of the place. Kind of funny. And well, that is it for part three.